Good evening, trustees, Superintendent Azarani, members of the cabinet and members of the audience. I am Amy Stratton, Director of Curriculum Assessment and Accountability. Tonight you will hear information on the Marysville Joint Unified School District LCAP for the 23-24 school year. MJUSD employs over 1,300 people which support student attendance for over 75 square miles and educates just over 10,000 students in TK through 12th grade, with approximately 500 students in the preschool programs. MCAA is a district sponsored charter and as required by law, will submit their own LCAP. The Local Control and Accountability Plan sets goals and actions to improve student outcomes. District LCAPs must be built around eight priority areas identified by the California Department of Education. The eight priorities are grouped under three overarching focus areas, conditions of learning, engagement, and student outcome. MJUSD LCAP has six goals aligned to the eight state priority areas. Goal one addresses academic performance. Goal two, student and staff safety. Goal three, college and career readiness. Goal four, provide supports for EL learners who are also low socioeconomic status and or foster youth. Goal five, focuses on home to school communication. And goal six, improve access and inclusion for special education. In this slide, we will identify the LCAP actions and accomplishments completed during the 22-23 school year. Many of the actions supported student wellness, professional development, expansion of programs and services, and partnerships developed throughout our community. On the next few slides, we will focus on the budget overview for parents, which is an important part of the LCAP. The Local Control Funding Formula, or LCFF, is California schools funding model. The LCFF funds school districts to serve high-need students, specifically unduplicated student groups identified as socioeconomically disadvantaged English learner and foster youth. The LCAP is written to show clearly what portion of the LCFF funds are being used to improve and increase services for these three subgroups. This slide is for reference only and shows how the LCFF funds are calculated. As required in the LCFF expenditures, this chart shows the 22-23 expenditures associated with increase and improved services for high need students. What we see here is the difference between what was budgeted and what was actually spent. The 23-24 budget shows that of the approximately $128 million in LCFF funds, $27.9 million is generated based on the enrollment of high-need students. For the 23-24 increase in improved services, the district has to meet expenditures totaling 35% because of the carryover dollars from the previous year, which was not spent. Therefore, the budgeted expenditures for 23-24 LCAP shows that we have allocated $34.5 million for improved and increased services for foster youth, English learners, and low socioeconomic status students. Let's look deeper at the goals and actions of the LCAP. The next several slides will recap the total budget, total budget for contributing actions of unduplicated students, and highlight some of the actions in the LCAP. LCAP Goal 1 addresses academic performance and has a budget of $12.8 million, with $11.3 million contributing towards the progress of unduplicated students. On this slide, we see the increased funds allocated to Goal 1 in the 23-24 school year to meet the LCAP target. Actions have been clearly written. Goal 2 addresses school safety and environment and has budgeted $17.7 million, with $16.8 million contributing towards the progress of unduplicated students.
On this slide, we see the increased funds allocated to Goal 2 in 2324 to meet the LCAP target. Actions have been clearly written. LCAP Goal 3 addresses college and career readiness and has budgeted $4.09 million, with $2.93 million contributing towards the progress of unduplicated students. On this slide, we see the increased funds allocated to Goal 3 in 23-24 to meet the LCAP target. Actions have been clearly written. LCAP Goal 4 addresses supports for English learners who are also identified as low socioeconomic and or foster youth. This goal has budgeted $1.57 million, with $1.17 contributing towards the progress of unduplicated students. We see the funds allocated to Goal 4 in 23-24 are less than the previous year. Even though there has been an increase in salaries of EL support providers, many of the expenditures have been moved to the categorical funding, and we have lower costs associated with material and curriculum purchases. LCAP Goal 5 addresses home-to-school communication and building school culture through meaningful relationships. This goal has been budgeted $2.35 million, with 2.2 contributing towards the progress of undeplicated students. On this slide, we see an increase in funds allocated to Goal 5 in 23-24 to meet the LCAP target. The actions have been clearly written. LCAP Goal 6 addresses access for special education and has budgeted $3.2 million. This goal supports mandated actions for students in special programs. On this slide, we see the increased funds allocated to Goal 6 in 23-24 to meet the LCAP target. The actions have been clearly written. As part of the Every Student Succeeds Act, schools that are identified as needing comprehensive supports and improvements, or CSI, have some additional reporting requirements that need to be addressed in the LCAP. Inside the LCAP, the district must identify schools qualifying for CSI and discuss how the schools will be supported. MJUSD has two sites in CSI, Cedar Lane Elementary and Dobbins Elementary. Administration will work alongside these sites during the school year and provide ongoing data monitoring and academics, suspension rate, and absenteeism. To recap, the LCAP has six goals aligned to the strategic plan and the state's priorities. Annually, all LEAs must meet the percentage identified by the state for increased and improved services. Our target is 35.05%, which includes carryover from the previous year. The total LCFF funds is $127.5 million. The total LCAP expenditure is $41.85 million. The total LCFF unduplicated expenditure is $34.54 million. All other state and federal expenditures is $7.3 million. Therefore, MJUSD has met our obligation of 35.05%. I would like to thank the board and the community for taking time to listen to the presentation. Thanks to the participating members who have provided guidance and feedback to the development of the LCAP through multiple meetings and community forums. If you have any questions or comments on the LCAP, a link will be available on the district webpage. The board will adopt the document at the next meeting on June 27th after which it will be submitted to Yuba County Office of Education and the California Department of Education before June 30, 2023.